Hey guys, it's Ryan with AIinsidertips.com and in this video, I'm going to be comparing two of the most popular AI chatbots today, which is of course ChatGPT and also Microsoft Copilot. Now, it's very interesting when you think about Microsoft having a vested interest in both of these AI chatbots as they all out own Copilot, of course, and they also have a huge interest in OpenAI and ChatGPT as they are the number one investor, I believe still are, and if it weren't for Microsoft, ChatGPT probably wouldn't exist. I'm not sure how many people are aware of that. But anyways, the purpose of this video is I want to look at Copilot versus ChatGPT. I want to look at what features each one of them has. I want to look at the pro plans, compare the pro plans. I want to look at some of the outputs for text prompts for different types of text prompts. I also want to look at image generation, compare the images for free that you can generate in Copilot versus the images that you can generate on ChatGPT Plus as both of them use Dolly 3. And you may be surprised at the difference in outputs, even though they're all using Dolly. But uh, regardless, guys, that is the purpose of this video is comparing ChatGPT and Microsoft Copilot. So let's dive dive in. So one of the first things I want to explore here is what exact AI language models do you get access to in Microsoft Copilot? Now it's pretty self-explanatory on ChatGPT. You get access to three different models. GPT-40, which is their newest and most advanced model. They just released this to the public for free, a very revolutionary move. GPT-4 and GPT-3.5. Now if you remember, you had to be a paid member of, of ChatGPT Plus in order to access the GPT-4 model previously. But now all three of these are open to the general public for use on ChatGPT. Now, if we head over to Copilot, it's a little more interesting because they don't blatantly tell you what models you can choose between. It's just a chat bot. So I'm going to go ahead and ask it here. What AI language model is Microsoft Copilot using? Is it GPT-4? Microsoft Copilot utilizes the Microsoft Prometheus model. I don't think I've ever heard of that one, which is built upon OpenAI's GPT-4 foundational large language model. This model has been fine-tuned using both supervised and reinforcement learning techniques. So what I'm gathering from this is that Microsoft used OpenAI's GPT-4 model. They added their supervised or reinforcement learning techniques. They trained it using other data that Microsoft must have had. And then they called it Microsoft Prometheus model. So basically a clone of OpenAI's GPT-4 is what I'm gathering from this. But long story short here, this is a negative of Copilot, of using Copilot over ChatGPT, is that you don't get access to three different language models or GPT-4.0, which is a better language model than what appears to be Microsoft Prometheus model. So that is the first thing that I wanted to look at. So now let's dive into some of these free features that you can find on both AI chatbots. The very first thing I want to mention here is on Copilot is you should be signed into a Microsoft account. You can get one for free if you don't already have one. Uh, but there's a lot of limitations on here where if you're not signed into a Microsoft account, there are certain things you can't do inside Microsoft Copilot. So that's first thing that I want to mention. The second thing here is let's start on the right hand side. We have Copilot GPTs, and there's only five pre-configured GPTs that Microsoft created. It looks like you can't create your own custom GPT. We're on ChatGPT, of course. Not, not only, do, only do they have a GPT store filled with thousands, if not millions, of custom GPTs at this point, you can also create your own and configure it to ho however you want to do. So that is a limitation of Copilot are these GPTs. They have one here for just the normal interface of Copilot. They have one for design to create AI images. They have a vacation planner, a cooking assistant, uh, a fitness trainer, which sounds kind of cool, but guys, ChatGPT probably has hundreds of custom GPTs for vacations, cooking, and fitness. So the GPTs on Copilot are kind of irrelevant in my opinion. Now, what's also interesting is that Copilot has the ability to access plugins. Whereas if you go to ChatGPT, I was actually looking around before I started recording this video, it almost appears that they got rid of plugins entirely. And if they did, let me know in the comments. If you go to your settings here, I looked through all these different settings, data controls, I believe it used to be under there, no mention of plugins anywhere. Builder profile, app, security, et cetera, et cetera. And also, too, there used to be a toggle here for plugins where you could drop down and choose language models. There's now no toggle for plugins. So it almost appears that they sunsetted plugins completely and just starting putting more of their resources and efforts into these custom GPTs to replace the plugins. That's what it appears so anyways. Now, it doesn't really matter because most of these plugins aren't really worthy, in my opinion. They have a Bing Search plugin, which integrates directly with Bing Search. That's all right. 
uh, Instacart, Kayak, Klarna, uh, Open Table, Phone, Shop. The only one that's worth noting here, in my opinion, is Suno, where you can actually generate AI music right inside Microsoft Copilot. I'll actually do this right now. I'll say, create me a short song about AI. And what this is going to do is it's going to use the Suno plugin. And if you're unfamiliar with Suno, this is a free AI music generator. And why this is so cool is that you can't actually do this inside ChatGPT. If I copy and paste this and try to create a song inside ChatGPT, it's going to tell me that it doesn't have the ability to do that. What it can do is create prompts where you can go and copy and paste prompts into AI music generators and it'll do it that way. But all it can do right now is create lyrics and then create prompts for AI music generators. Whereas Copilot, you'll see here, it just generated a song right inside the interface using the Suno plugin. So I'm actually gonna skip ahead here and let's play the song quickly and see what it sounds like. All right, so let's give it a quick listen here. So interesting that the lyrics appear to be in a different language. I'm not even sure what language that is, um, but the beat's kind of cool. I mean, it, I gave it a really short prompt, so I'm not surprised by the quality of that response. Uh, but regardless, guys, I just wanted to show you really quickly that you can actually generate AI music inside Copilot and you can't inside ChatGPT. The other thing that's worthy to note here, I guess, is it has a notebook, um, so you can you know, write notes within Copilot if you want to do that, if you're using this tool frequently. So the next thing I want to cover are the differences in the premium tier. So Copilot has an option for Copilot Pro, which costs $20 a month. Um, and with Copilot Pro, it just says you get unlock Copilot in your favorite apps. You get access to this inside Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, uh, OneNote, which if you're on the free version, I don't believe you do that. That's the benefit of Copilot Pro. Get priority access to GPT-4 and GPT-4 Turbo during peak times. Use Copilot and productivity apps. So again, Microsoft's ecosystem here. Generate unique images and then enhance your creations using 100 daily boosts with Designer. So again, that usage limits with AI image generation with DALI. So not really good in my opinion. The only way that I could ever justify paying $20 a month for Copilot Pro is if you're using these tools frequently with Excel, uh, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Outlook, and you're using it every day. That's the only thing that I could see is worth justifying this $20 a month expense. Whereas if we go to ChatGPT+, Plus, which I am a member to, it also costs $20 a month and you get access to all three language models, which you do on the free version as well. You get early access to new features. You also get higher usage limits with GPT-4.0, which is the most advanced model. And here's the selling point in my opinion. You get access to data analysis. You can generate charts and graphs and help analyze data in a more efficient manner with ChatGPT+. You get file uploads, so not only images, but PDFs. You get vision and web browsing. You get that on Copilot as well. That's not really a huge deal. Um, Dolly image generation, create and use custom GPTs. I believe that is on the free plan now, unless I'm mistaken. I thought I saw that somewhere. But this is interesting because I'm going to explore this here in a little bit in this video is that the images that you get from Dolly inside ChatGPT Plus are actually better than what you get using Dolly inside Microsoft Copilot. I'm going to explore that here later on. But long story short, guys, what I'm trying to tell you here in this little section is that I would not pay for Copilot Pro. If you're going to pay $20 a month, you're better off using it for ChatGPT Plus as you just get more inside ChatGPT Plus than what you would get from Microsoft Copilot Pro. So I hope now you have a better understanding of some of the basic details and features of both the paid and free versions of Copilot versus ChatGPT. But now what I wanna do is actually put these tools to the test and start testing some prompts so we can kind of analyze and look at the different results. So what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to do a quick recency prompt. I'm gonna use GPT-4.0 in this example, and I'm gonna use the just the general balanced of Copilot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask it a recency prompt just to kick this off. What is the current price of Bitcoin? I'm going to ask both AI tools here. And what this is doing is this is scraping Bing search results. So it says the price live price of Bitcoin today is $71,025.03. I understand it fluctuates quite a bit, um, but what I'm going to do is check Google search as well so we can see this price of Bitcoin. And right now it's $69,693. So it is off by a couple thousand. 
uh, where if I go to chat GPT or GPT 4, 4 it says 69,703. That was closer to the actual price right now. Uh, and it looks like it's pulling from Coindesk coin. So it has three different sources that it's pulling from versus the one that Copilot was using with Bing search results. So I have to give the nod in this quick example to chat GPT when it comes to recency. So let's take this a step further now and test summarization. So if you're not in the world of SEO, there was a really good article that came out about Google's algorithm leak. And that's not you know, important for the purpose of this video. But what's important here is you'll notice how long this article is. This would take maybe 30 minutes, if not longer, uh, to read through all this. And now what I want to do is I want to just quickly summarize this and see what's going on at a high level versus read the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask both AI tools to help me summarize this long article. I need your help with summarization. If I provide a link to an article, can you give me five bullet points of the most important takeaways and how I could use this? And I provided the article link. So I'm going to hit enter here, hit enter on Copilot as well. And then I'm going to skip ahead and wait till this output is complete. All right, so here's the output that I got from Copilot. It says I've reviewed the article and it actually gave the title. So that means it, it actually successfully went through and scraped the link. Um, and then it gave me a few takeaways, documentation link, data storage, nav boost, caveats, Google proprietary information. Uh, not very in depth here. I mean, not really good points. I asked how I could use this uh, and it's not really giving me advice on how I could use it. And now if I go back to chat GPT, it not only gave me key takeaways, and it also is a lot better key takeaways, in my opinion, ranking factors, a leak disclosed 14,014 attributes, and it gave it a number of modules, uh, misleading statements, uh, specific algorithm measures, SEO implications, but then it also tells me how I can use this data, SEO strategy adjustment, content creation, client consulting, educational content. So it went a step further and actually provided helpful information. Now, I have to give the nod to ChatGPT for summarization, um, but I am impressed here that Copilot actually was able to scrape this URL. I have to admit that. Now let's take it one step further with summarization and tell you why you shouldn't use Copilot for summarization at all. If I click this attachment image or attachment feature, you can only upload images on Copilot. You cannot upload PDFs. So if you want to have an AI tool scrape a PDF and help it summarize it for you, you need to do this with ChatGPT. As you'll see here, if I click this option to upload, I can upload from my computer. I can add from Google Drive. You can't do that in Copilot. And I can also add from Microsoft OneDrive. I don't even think you can do that in Copilot. Is if I come here, there's no option to add anything from OneDrive. I'm sure it's available probably in the pro plan, uh, but you can integrate with all sorts of different things here. So if I upload from computer, I can upload a PDF. Uh, can you summarize this PDF uh, in five bullet points? And ChatGPT will summarize an entire PDF based on whatever directions that you give it in a matter of seconds. So that's very, very impressive. And that's one of the highlighting features here of summarization that I wanted to show you of why you should use ChatGPT instead of Microsoft Copilot in this regard. So the next thing I wanna look at when comparing ChatGPT versus Copilot is the difference in AI image generation. Now, both of these tools are technically using Dolly 3 to generate AI images, but the differences are pretty stark from my experience of using both of these for AI images. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do two examples. I'm gonna do a basic image prompt, then I'm gonna do a more advanced AI image prompt, and let's see how both of these tools pan out. So I'm gonna do create a realistic image of a golf course with mountains in the background. And I'm gonna do this for both tools. So I'm gonna to copy and paste this. And while I'm actually in here, I'm going to use the designer Copilot GPT as it is tailored to create AI images. And then I'm gonna come in here, copy and paste this. And while this is generating in the background, one thing I think that's important to mention is that there's this Copilot designer. So bing.com forward slash images slash create. This used to be called the Bing Image Creator and it became a very popular tool and still is. This is now rebranded as Copilot Designer and this is the exact same thing and generation that you would get inside this interface using the designer Copilot GPT. So here it's generating the images. So here's what we got from chat inside chat GPT. Here's the image of the golf course with mountains in the background. Not bad, pretty good. I mean, there's bunkers, there's a green. Uh, there's actually a flag inside the hole on a green. I've seen that. I've used this example in the past. I've seen that be a fault. Uh, trees, so pretty realistic. You can tell it's a little animated just from looking at some of the trees and whatnot, uh, but not bad.
Now let's see what Copilot generated using this exact same prompt. So it generated four images and that is, I guess, one little benefit versus the one that you get inside chat GPT. Right here, you'll see Dolly 3. So we know it's Dolly 3, but there are some flaws in this image generation. So right here, there's like a little pin sticking out where the guy's teeing off. Uh, that's definitely a fault. I saw on this one, there's multiple golf balls on the tee box. Uh, not really sure what's going on here. There's also multiple greens out here, so it's not really realistic. Uh, some of these aren't terrible. Uh, this one's not horrible in my opinion. What's interesting is there's a, a golf club just sitting, leaning against the guy while he's swinging. Uh, so that's definitely a fault. So you'll see here, there's all these little different errors that you get inside Copilot. Uh, more errors, I should say, that you get inside Copilot versus what you would get inside ChatGPT+. So now what I'm going to do is actually take this image generation to the next level. I'm going to ask each tool the following. I'm going to ask for a visually striking blog post header featuring the white center text, chat GPT versus Copilot, and all these other more specific details for a blog post header. I could use this for a YouTube thumbnail. I've done this in the past. Just a much more advanced prompt for AI image generation. So I'm gonna click enter, come over to Copilot, copy and paste that over here. And then I'm going to skip ahead after both of these outputs are complete. So here is what I got using that prompt in Copilot. So right away, you'll notice that most of these aren't really usable. The text here, that's completely inaccurate. Uh, the text here is inaccurate. And this one's just a little interesting. I would never find myself using something like this as it says blog posts. It's just, it's all over the place. This one's decent. I could definitely see myself using this one, getting rid of some of this text up here and down here, but that's definitely a start. You could use that for something. Now, if I hop over to ChatGPT, you'll see here, this is the image that I got. Now, I did need to edit it once. As you'll see here, it did misspell ChatGPT and Copilot. That's the biggest flaw of AI image generators in general right now is misspelling text inside images. But what's cool is you can come in here, click the edit button, and then highlight anything that you want to edit inside an image and then give it your edit. So you'll see I did that here. I said the text should read ChatGPT versus Copilot. So if we come back to the actual chat, this is the revised image that I got inside ChatGPT. Much better image that I would use for both a blog post and a YouTube thumbnail on this topic than what you would use for something like this that Copilot generated. But long story short, guys, I hope you understand and can see some of the differences between AI image generation when it comes to ChatGPT versus Copilot. Because since they are both using Dolly 3, the outputs are different and it's very important to realize that. So just some final thoughts here, guys, when it comes to comparing ChatGPT versus Copilot, I would highly recommend using ChatGPT over Copilot. Now, previously, before ChatGPT, when you had to pay for Plus to get access to the advanced models, I was actually a big proponent of Copilot. Now, the only reason I could ever justify using Copilot over ChatGPT anymore is maybe it's integrations with Microsoft Word, Excel, uh, PowerPoint, using it in Outlook. But again, I'm not sure if you can even do that without paying for the pro version of Copilot, which you should not do for $20 a month. If you're going to pay for a pro version of an AI tool, you should get ChatGPT Plus and not Copilot Pro. The only other benefit I could see here, to be honest, is this Suno AI integration where you can generate AI music inside Copilot and you can't do that inside ChatGPT. But when it comes to image generation, summarization, recency, uh, ideation, and all sorts of other prompting techniques, you're going to be better off using ChatGPT, especially now that everyone has access to GPT-40, which is the most sophisticated model, GPT-4. Uh, you also get access to custom GPTs now. Uh, that was not available previously to people if you weren't subscribed to ChatGPT+, Plus, so that's another benefit. Um, but long story short here, 95% of the time now, I would suggest using ChatGPT versus Microsoft Copilot. I want to know what you guys think in the comments below. Are you a frequent user of Copilot versus ChatGPT? Which one do you prefer? Uh, did you like this video? Give me a like. If you didn't, give me a dislike. I want to know how I can keep providing as much value as I can for you guys in the overwhelming world of artificial intelligence. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel at AI Insider Tips, I would truly appreciate that. And the final thing I want to note here is if you haven't gotten my free guide on the best AI side hustles, you can find that in the description below below or pin comment. I show you here some AI side hustles that I personally use myself to generate more than $5,000 a month in passive income online. So with that being said, guys, again, I truly appreciate you watching this video. I appreciate you following AI insider tips, and I hope you all have a great day.